Hi, uh, it's time for another math easy solution. Today we're going to discuss uh, further into improper integrals and now go over type 1 infinite intervals in more detail. Basically, in my earlier video, I went over an introduction to improper integrals and briefly discussed the two types type 1, which was infinite intervals. Type 2, which was an infinite discontinuity or discontinuous integrands. So make sure to watch that uh, that video and, and you can see that in the video link below. Basically, in this video, I will go over the type 1 uh, improper integrals in greater detail as well as outlining the definition. Yeah, so now let's go over type 1 infinite intervals. First, uh, consider the infinite region S that lies below the curve Y equals uh, 1 divided by X squared but above the x-axis and to the right of the x equals one line. So if you were to draw this curve, it would look something like this is the x, it's the y curve. So this function here, is you, if you put zero, it goes to infinity, and as you put larger and larger number, it goes smaller and smaller, something like that. And we're looking at x equals one line right here. Let's just put it anywhere here. It's not the scale. This graph's not the scale, um, but anyways, uh, so you have this part right here and it's to the right of this line. So this is the y equals 1 over x squared. And it's above the x-axis and, and to the right. So it's an infinite region here. I'll uh, highlight it in red and we'll call this S. So now initially uh, you might think that this region S, uh, since it's infinite in extent, it keeps going to the right. Its area, you might think that it, it must be um, yeah, infinite. I just corrected that uh, quickly. But let's take a closer look to see if it's actually infinite. So the area of the part of the region here that lies to the left of the x equals, to the left of the x equals t line. Let's draw a random line like this. This is x equals to t. Let's say we want to solve for this region across here, the integral or the area in this case, we'll have here a of t equals to the integral from one to t of one over x squared dx. So remember the integral uh, when you have it all positive right here is just an area of the region. So this equals two. Now if you take this uh, integral, we'll just simplify it further. So 1 over t, put this above, this is just the same as writing x to the power of negative 2. This is easier for me to apply the power um, rule yeah, for integrals. So this one, integral of this one, we add a power, so it will be negative 1. So this would be uh, x to the negative 1, and I'll bring this 1 divided by negative 1, let's just negative right that, like that. And it's from 1 to t, this equals 2. And then this one just fix this back up. This is one over x from one to t. This equals two, plug these in. Put the t inside, we'll have negative one over t minus, and put the one inside since there's a minus, be positive one. One over one is just one. So this equals to one minus, this rearranges one, yeah, minus one, yes, yeah, so one minus one divided by t. So this is the area, this one equals two a of t. I'll just put this better like that. So now one thing that we notice from this equation, notice that this area a of t is less than 1 no matter how large t is. If you, as the larger you get t here, you're going to be 1 minus, well you're still subtracting 1 divided by whatever number. But we also observe that if you take the limit, so, so the limit as t approaches to infinity of a of t equals to, well, just the limit of the equation here. Limit as t approaches infinity of one minus one over t. This one here, if you plug in as infinity, it just keeps getting larger and larger, one divided by a larger, larger number, it keeps getting smaller and smaller. So this is approaching zero. So this is actually, in fact, equal to one or approaches one. Yeah, so basically the area of the shaded region above this one right here, this entire shaded region, as you can see, it's approaching one as t approaches infinity. So we say that the area of the infinite region is equal to one, that's what we say it is. So this is when we talked in infinite terms, so it's equal to one, and we can write now one, uh, integral from one to infinity of one over x squared dx, this equals two 
the limit as t approaches infinity of one to t of one over x squared d. And in our case, this equals to one right there. And now to get a visual understanding of this is to, bit, to make it a bit more clear. If we look at these graphs right here, let's uh, of that one over x squared function. So at here it equals x equals to one. So if we were to graph this one up to, up to let's say two. So let's say this is uh, two right here. This area right here is equal to one minus, well, one divided by two, that's just a half. And then if we were to do it on this side, uh, so this is one, let's get a bigger area, three right here. And then this is gonna be, as you can see, we're adding a smaller, no, or we're subtracting a smaller number. So area here equals to one minus one over three. This equals to, well, two thirds. So this goes from one half, now we're going a half of that. Uh, not half of that, but we're just getting a smaller uh, portion of it. So we're not improving too much from one to the other. So I'll show right here. So if we have x equals to one here, let's go a bigger one, five. This area here is not much bigger than before. So area is equal to one minus one over five equals to, well, four over five. So we go from half, now we're going to we have the, so we go from initially it's one, one half is the area, then it's two thirds, four fifths. So moving by one, x equals one each time, we're not changing too much. And eventually the area as you go to infinity all the way here, area is finally just equal to one. Yeah, and here, and here, this was just a quick visual representation of what I just covered. So now using this example as a guide, we can define the integral of the function f, and again, not necessarily a positive one as this example was, uh, over an in infinite in interval as the limit of integrals over finite. Yeah, so in other words, instead of dealing with infinite intervals, what we're doing is pretty much uh, taking a limit or breaking it down into infinite of uh, finite intervals right here or taking the limit. So we'll explain that further. So now the definition of an improper integral of type one is basically if the integral from a to t of fx dx exists, yeah, for every number t which is greater than or equal to a, then what we have is integral from a to t of not a to, a to infinity of f of x dx. So we're just using that same uh, like guide from that similar um, example we just did above. This equals to the limit as t approaches infinity of a to t. So this was an infinite inter uh, infinite integral. Now we're going to do it as a limit of a finite where this t number goes there f of x dx. And again, this is assuming that the limit exists as a finite number. If it doesn't exist, if it goes to infinity, then that's going to be a, a divergent integral. And it's, um, yeah, and, and we don't exactly get a number and that limit just doesn't exist. And I'll get to that in a And now similarly, if we are looking at, yeah, an infinite interval on the negative side as opposed to the positive side, so integral from t to b, if this exists, f of x dx exists for every number t is less than or equal to b, then the integral, now we have it's just the same thing, but on the left side, an integral from negative infinity to b of f of x dx, again, is gonna be equal to the limit of the finite interval of this is t is negative, t approaches negative infinity of, this is gonna be t, to b of f of x dx. And again, this is assuming that this uh, limit exists as a finite number, otherwise the limit doesn't exist and it's considered as divergent. And that's explained here, basically the improper integrals, integral from a to infinity of f of x dx and integral from negative in infinity to b of f of x dx are called convergent if the corresponding limit exists and divergent if the limit does not exist. And now the last part of this definition, part C, if both the integrals from a, this one a to infinity of f of x dx and integral from negative infinity to b of f of x dx are convergent, meaning they exist, then we can basically define this integral 
integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of x dx as yeah as basically the uh, as both as both parts a and b so as a, as a sum of both parts so this is equal to negative infinity uh, to a of f of x dx plus integral now from a to this is infinity of f of x dx. So if it's convergent on both sides, we could just add them up, add parts a and b up. And again, in in part c right here, any real number a can be used. Any because it again both these exist everywhere. Yeah, the integral of f of x dx exists for every number, so this could be anything you want. It could be one, two, whatever, and then you'll still be the same as yeah as this overall infinite integral. And just one more note, any of the improper integrals in the above definition can be interpreted as an area, provided the function f is a positive function. Just uh, just similar to that example I went over, which is integral from one divided by x squared on the positive side or greater than or equal to x. So basically, for instance, in case a, uh, if f of x is greater than or equal to zero and the integral from a to infinity of f of x dx is convergent, meaning the limit exists, then we define the area of the region S. This is uh, this just this is brackets x y. This just means um, in this um, domain and range x y, x is greater than or equal to a, and x I mean, and y is greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to f of x. This is just saying area under the curve, but above the x-axis, and to the right of uh, of uh, the line x equals a. And this is shown below. So this is going to be an area. So what we could do is write a of s, which is area under the curve, and I'll draw that curve soon, is just equal to uh, integral from a to infinity of f of x dx. And that's the area. And exa it's exactly like that example I, w I covered, or the, uh, get the initial example. So basically here, why this is all this means, if you had a random function, uh, let's say at a is here so it's to the right of a. it's greater than it and it goes like this but it's convergent so it keeps getting smaller and smaller in into uh, yeah over there it gets smaller and smaller and then right here this is the y equals f of x curve and this is the area right here of s if this is s yeah the area is a of s and this region is just saying this whole thing here. And the area is above right here. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you'll learn from this uh, pretty in-depth uh, video on the first type of improper integrals. And again, we defined it using basically this example as a guide right here. And this, is, this one, because it's all positive, it, it could be considered as an area area when you use the uh, infinite limit. Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you learned and like always you can download these exact notes in the link below and thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.